let us continue our discussion on this computer network and internet. We are discussing on layer 2 label or layer 2 protocols rather some of the protocols are company and probably other higher level protocols namely ARP, RARP, boot TP, DHCP right. So, already we are uh, discussed in our last lecture about ARP uh, and we will try to see other protocols that how it helps in, uh, in this uh, overall communication process. So, just to one or two slides on the uh, recap that any two machines on the network can communicate only if each other's physical address network, uh, network address is known. So, unless you know the physical address the things cannot be uh, communicated. So, there is a need to res resolve the higher level IP to a low level machine address or MAC address. Uh, so, that you know that the next of the next of things. So, any transmission whether it is host to router, router to router, host to host, router to host what is required is a trans a when the next stop things uh, what is the uh, hardware address or the MAC address of the things right. So, that exactly the job of the ARP or address resolution protocol. Also we have discussed about uh, some aspect of proxy ARP the different component of the ARP package that which makes this possible like. So, there is a need of caching of those uh, things so that the next request comes and can be addressed in a much easier fashion. So, this is the pretty popular diagram. So, logical address or the IP address ARP to physical address on the other physical address or ARP to the logical address. So, there is another companion protocol or the other protocol means the uh, protocol with ARP is the RARP reverse ARP that is given the MAC address or given the physical address how uh, I can uh, resolve to the uh, IP address. So, uh, where it may be possible requirement we have seen that where things may be required. One of the major thing is that if I have a dumb terminal it wants to know what is the IP address during the boot time etcetera then there may be a reverse resolution. Uh, I may want to know that uh, if I get a request of uh, I want to do a reverse resolution and see that what is the IP of the thing. So, uh, in case of connecting other uh, things like uh, VPN or some other type of lines I want to uh, there where the IP address need to be allocated based on the network address and so and so forth. So, uh, so finds logical uh, finds the logical address of for a machine that only knows this physical address. So, the physical address to the logical address mapping this is often encountered on thin client workstation as we have seen thin client workstations no disk. So, when the machine is booted it needs to know its IP address. So, in a in case of a thin client workstation uh, it machine wants to know that IP address to be getting connected with the network and so and so forth. RARP requests are broadcast as we have seen uh, in ARP. RARP replies are unicast because you now you know that where to send the reply. If a thin client workstation needs to know its IP address, it is probably also needs to know its subnet marks, router address, DNS address, etcetera. Right. So, if you just uh, recollect or remember that if I if you once you want to do your IP configuration or so to say TCP IP configuration in your windows or Linux machine some of the things uh, what are the different parameters you will be looking at. Uh, if you if we recollect or if you remember that so one is that IP address right IP address what it gives the logical address to the system other than I what we require is the subnet mask. Right. Why we require this subnet marks? The subnet marks allows me to when I uh, allows me to find out that whether the the other address is within the in my network or not. So, it is the subnet marks. So, there is a gateway address like if it is the if the thing is not within my uh, distance is within not in within the network. So, what should be the next of gateway of that uh, particular packet? So, there is other of the DNS. So, if, if it is if there is a domain and resolution uh, resolution is required then where is the DNS server uh, is located. So, there are DNS usually primary and secondary DNS. So, these are the things what we require uh, in the thing. So, subnet marks or the router or the gateway address and DNS address and etcetera. 
So, so when a system boots a thin client boots which do not have the memory of memorizing the or remembering the its uh, configuration may wants to know the IP address, subnet marks, uh, DNS uh, addresses and type of things. If we need something more th than RARP, so other than only resolution there are other protocol uh, called boot TP, we will come to that and also a the uh, upgraded or variant of the things which is DHCP which have replaced RARP. So, RARP from there we have boot TP and type of things. So, all what it knows that physical address right. So, from there it want to populate its network uh, property stack. So, that it start communicate uh, communication in the network. So, as, as we have seen in case of a ARP here also that uh, with a physical address it, uh, it gives advertisement and the logical address is uh, sent to the uh, back to the host. So, there can be a RARP server or some of them will require uh, requ uh, means uh, the host sends a request the RARP server sends the response of the uh, on based on the request if it is containing that particular hardware address uh, from where the logical address can be uh, derived. And if you look at the packet format it is somewhat similar with that uh, uh, ARP uh, things operations is 3 is request 4 is uh, uh, 4 is a response. And uh, if you see here the sender hardware address uh, is uh, known a uh, hardware address is known whereas, sender protocol address is unknown. So, because I the sender that is the uh, thin client knows that what is its hardware address, but the thin client does not know where where what is the IP address that is it is looking for. So, what it says it sends a request to that particular RARP server the server uh, respond back if there can be more than RARP server. Uh, the server which is having this thing that mapping of MAC address or the hardware address to the IP address respond uh, responds back that sending that this is the IP address and that gets populated to the sender. So, in this case in the previous case it was there while sending the packet it is looking for that uh, hardware address where the frame can be forwarded in this case it wants to know the network address. So, it gets connect uh, can get connected to the network right. So, if you look at so senders hardware address uh, a protocol address or the IP address is not known in this IP B4 for 4, 4 bytes whereas, the target hardware address is known and the target uh, protocol address is known. So, where the server is there it is known to the thing. So, and also in case of uh, ethernet what we have that it goes as a payload to this ethernet. Uh, overall ethernet format or ethernet uh, packet and it, it, it ethernet frame and it goes as a data that is whether it is a request or response in case of a RARP. So, the what it uh, the uh, what we say that the next step of or the next uh, upgraded variant of RARP is the boot TP. So, which uh, as, as we are discussing that not, not only the IP address there are other uh, other parameters which are equally important for the network. So, so to say the parameters like uh, IP uh, your um, network mask, uh, gateway or um, router address, DNS addresses and these are equally important. So, that the server which is responding to this request should also uh, send should also send back the um, this these are the uh, these are the uh, these parameters. So, that the network stack of the uh, originating machine or the thin client gets populated. So, that it can connect to the network right. So, for that for that the um, boot TP server should have this capability. So, bootstrap protocol allows a host to configure itself dynamically at boot time. So, that is the basic uh, philosophy that the boot TP protocol allows a particular host uh, like thin clients and so to configure itself for the dynamically at boot time. This protocol provides three services one is IP address assignment as we did in RARP detection of IP address of a serving machine right it needs to know that who will give the IP address and detect the thing. 
the name of the file to be loaded and executed at the client machine. So, it it's get uh, loaded and that file to be executed so that the it gets populated by the uh, this it helps in populating the uh, network stack. Boot TP protocol typically assumed to be never fragmented that means, the you get the whole thing in a one uh, unfragmented uh, message. So, it is not fragmented. So, it is not like the 2, 3 and things are coming. So, this is boot TP protocol is not fragmented. So, uh, as we are requesting for a service, so it works on two very well known port, uh, well defined port numbers. One is port 67, where the server works and the port 68, where the boot TP client works. So, that is a defined port process the boot TP client broadcast a single packet called boot TP request packet containing the max client uh, MAC address. The client waits for the response from the server. If not received within a specified time, the client return means the request. The server responds with a boot TP, boot TP boot reply, right. So, it sends a boot request packet containing the MAC address, client's MAC address that this is my MAC address, you send me the other details. The client waits for the response from the server. If not received within a specified time period, it resends it, it retransmits it. The server responds with a boot reply packet. So, few more basics the view on boot TP or few more things the points to note. Boot TP is an alternative to RARP which operates at the data link layer for the LAN only, right. So, it is a alternative to RARP. Boot TP is a UDIP based configuration protocol provide much more configuration information allows dynamic configuration of the network IP network configuration. So, if you see, so these are different companion protocol which has upper layer linkages and also have uh, need to deal with the low uh, layer 2 level MAC address, right. So, that is why we are trying to look at it at the when we are discussing this DLL or the layer 2 level uh, um, uh, phenomena, right. So, this is uh, one of the important aspects to be known uh, to be seen. So, boot TB and its extension become the basis for DCP, uh, DHCP protocol, right. That will come to that net, net, next upgradation of the boot TB, the DHCP, right, DHCP protocol. So, if we look at the boot TP uh, uh, packet format, it is much uh, uh, enriched than uh, what we have uh, seen in case of uh, um, RARP. So, operation code, hardware type, hardware length, hop count, transaction ID, uh, which, which request where it is sending, number of second pass, which is whether some uh, portion is unused then it is a client IP address, your IP address, client uh, server IP address, gateway IP address and then what we require that uh, client hardware address, server name and so on and so forth. So, that means, what we are uh, and there is a boot file name. So, that it is downloaded and executed during the bootstrap and there are uh, some optional things. Now, you see uh, what where it is uh, in this case is required is I uh, it require a boot TV server which will respond to the things. So, the boot TV server typically holds this uh, MAC or the hardware address to IP address uh, mapping or in other sense in some cases uh, if we when we look at the DSCP we will see that it has a pool of addresses from where the IP address being allocated right. So, it is more, more, much more managed and this is uh, a well uh, known phenomena what we see when we talk, when we work with uh, when we work with thin clients and the clients which do not have IP address to, uh, attached to it right. So, during the boot time it gets the IP address and the configuration and start uh, start configuring. So, uh, though, though there are uh, there, uh, in uh, first cut we see that challenges that it is having a thin client and uh, this thin clients or this uh, boot TP clients may not have uh, 
uh, the initially the IP address, but you see there are if there is a centrally managed thing. So, the overall management may be much better when we look at it the things right. So, configuring the uh, overall network will be much better. In some scenario where you require this dynamic allocation of uh, thing uh, of uh, uh, network configuration files, these are pretty helpful or pretty much needed for those type of configurations. So, boot tp if we see operational code the value is 1 for boot request and boot reply it is 2 that operation code hardware type value may be uh, value is 1 for ethernet to experimental ethernet frame relay atm. So, it supports a variety of uh, layer 2 uh, um, uh, layer 2 uh, level or data ding level uh, protocols like uh, it can be ethernet it can be experimental ethernet frame relay ATM and different type of uh, flavors it supports right. Uh, then if you look at the operations, so these are the things and uh, if we look at the operations, so server at 67 port on UDP it keeps a uh, keeps a passive open and when there is a request from the thing uh, from the client at from port 68 it uh, replies back with the with a UDP. Uh, at uh, uh, means opened as a UDP and reply by as a UDP packet, right? So as uh, if we see the request with a destination port uh, means uh, source port, destination port, source address, destination port goes on and it gets a reply back on those uh, line, right? So uh, what we see that my source address may be initially. Uh, not known see if you, if you see that if it is uh, source port is 67, uh, destination port is 68, source address is the server unicast address and uh, destination address is all one. So, the clients uh, unicast address right. So, this way it uh, goes into the thing. So, it may be that the client may not have any address or the client may be had having a address that all are not that all uh, may be uh, remembering the previous address and try to confirm that whether the steel address it, it will continue with this address. The if we uh, look at the next or the predominant variant of this uh, MAC to IP configuration is a DHCP dynamic host control protocol. Now, let us look at it not as a MAC to IP conversion only, it is basically meant for dynamically uh, configuring the network uh, stack of a particular host, right. Being a particular host, I want to dynamically configure the things. So, this is not only required for a dump terminal, but several, uh, several other scenarios where this network configuration needs to be. Uh, dynamic equal configured when the request come. So, there are uh, scenarios where uh, where in several situations where it is DHCP configured. So, in the machine boots it is request for that keep me IP address and other configuration and it get uh, uh, the network stack of the host gets uh, configured. And if you see in today's several uh, organization, even in, in our uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, network in labs and other places where number of systems are there, they are DHCP configured. That means, while booting uh, ideally they request for the DHCP server which is somewhere in the network and uh, it uh, gets that configuration to be noted. As I was mentioning other than getting the IP address and getting connected, this gives a enormous uh, control over that which IP uh, range you want to allocate uh, and what are the gateways you want to push through and it gives a lot of management related uh, uh, handles to this uh, type of uh, configurations. So, this is a now a very well known practice to have this sort of configuration into the uh, this sort of uh, structure into uh, this sort of uh, protocol or process into place. So, that way the system get configured dynamically while booting. 
Now, it is a it is used centrally to allocate manage TCP IP configurations of the client nodes as we are mentioning right. So, it is centrally allocate and manage TCP IP allows uh, a administrator to define pools of IP address which are then allocated to the client computers in the thing. So, it can be pool of IP address say CS IIT Kharagpur this pool is there from there the systems can be allocated. This, this pool of addresses of often known as a DHCP scopes right. Not all the addresses handed out so also so also are the related configuration settings like subnet marks, default router or the gateway, DNS server etcetera. So, these are also uh, can be configured. So, the DHCP server per se contains those, those uh, informations which can be let out to the things right. So, this is uh, this is one way of uh, looking at that uh, DHCP, uh, DHCP server and it is a uh, as I was mentioning practiced in several organization and installation to look at uh, to for dynamic configuration of the network. So, how it works? DHCP works across most IP routers, uh, allocates IP address depending on the subnets and the request uh, came from, no need of to configure a PCs that is moved from one subnet to another. So, it is it even uh, across the thing. So, we, we even there are concept of DHCP relays if it is not within the DHCP server within the network it goes across the there are DHCP relays which can uh, send the request across uh, to some other network. When a DHCP client is first switched on, it sends a broadcast packet to the network with a DHCP request. There is a picked up by a GHCP server. If there are more than DHCP server, that will picked up to the GHCP server, and server allocates an IP address to the PC from one of the scopes it has. So, what we say that it is some sort of discovering a server and then getting bind with that, uh, but uh, with that particular IP and other um, configuration of the server it is having. Now, uh, DHCP per se do not allocate a uh, address uh, or addresses permanently. So, it leases the address for a particular time period controlled by a administrator right. So, it leases the address for a particular time period and controlled uh, address by the uh, by a administrator. So, it is that how much leasing etcetera is there. So, this is a uh, this is a give lot of manageability into the things like if you want to a particular sector of the things you put a configuration a, for a particular set of systems then once that uh, time period uh, goes up you can basically take out those uh, IP out of the things the system goes out of the network right or it uh, next day you can put them or next instant you can put them in a separate bundle of IP address blocks. So, this gives a better manageability of the things that overall that how you handle and manage the your internal systems within the network and so and so, and so forth. So, DHCP packet as uh, like uh, we have seen in the boot TP also contains several uh, similar fields. Uh, there may be some uh, one or two changes, but that is mostly the same type of fields. Uh, and uh, what we uh, see if we look at uh, the uh, configuration uh, of the things that uh, that initially as we are discussing that overall operation it uh, that initially when the it system boots it uh, it sends a some sort of a broadcast message to there to find out that whether any servers are there or not. As I was mentioning that if it the servers is not within the network, there is a process of relaying the request to the to the other network where there may be the DHCP server. So, it is DHCP discover uh, is the process which goes on. Then uh, several server can offer uh, that I am I am ready to serve right. I have a IP address that ready to serve more than one server is there. So, ideally the DHCP uh, thing selects one of the server and it uh, go to of a DHCP request that requesting to give the uh, IP address and other network configuration. So, that is one of the aspects and on receiving the request uh, DHCP server uh, the request that DHCP server allocate a um, IP and other configuration files right. So, it is DHCP acknowledge 
once that is there it goes on bind with that particular uh, configurations right so this 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 is the if you look at this process so this is the process of getting an ip and get configured into the things right uh, so it initializes just to repeat it sends a discover message the potential server sends a discover dscb offer and dscp request and requesting and dscp acknowledge uh, it sends a once that one of the server things are there acknowledge and uh, it sets a dscp uh, acknowledge and bound to that particular configuration one it is there it is attached with that uh, particular dscp server so once we are at uh, once it is attached to the dscp server uh, now the next things come into play as we are as we were discussing that it is not a permanent allocation of ip address right so the ip address or the other configurations are not permanently allocated so in other terms it is a lease to the system lease to that uh, particular requester or the host now once that is leased to the things so after the expiry of the lease period things will be recovered or uh, you need to return the things but there are two situations the dscp may request for a uh, renewal of the lease right so it may request for a renewal of the lease when it can do when when there is a lease time 50% expired it sends a typically sends or it at any point of time it can send but it's typically sent as a dscp request so renewing of the things so there may be two operations that is uh, either uh, it is acknowledged that it is renewed and it is gets to the bind so that means it sends a um, uh, after 50 percent dscp request it for the renewing it acknowledges as a positive acknowledge and it goes to the binds and the new time starts all right so this is this may be the one thing and if it is not acknowledged positively in a that you if the dscp act is not received then the list time 87.5 percent once expired then there is a another dscp request right so request of dscp so it is rebinding goes into play right so dscp acknowledge and again uh, bind into the thing right so see uh, so two aspects are there one is after 50 percent is sends a request gets a acknowledge rebind or rebound to the particular stack so that it does not have to new ip and the and the things works on a smooth fashion and that can be the thing that it may not be renewing may that you may not receive the dscp act then it gets a uh, after 87.5 percent it sends a uh, fresh request then again the rebinding uh, operation goes on if there is a positive acknowledgement it gets again bind to the thing uh, uh, with the thing and goes on if it is still not acknowledged that means it is a dscp nac so so to say that is that dscp the lease is not been increased by the server then it goes for the again initial stage right so if it is again requested goes for the initial stage again request for the fresh uh, allocation and the process continues right so this is this is the way but there is another uh, another uh, connection if you see if after the binding so there is a uh, the client can release it dscp release work is over release it or lease is cancelled midway so that can be may happen the lease is cancelled midway in that case also it goes to this initialization state right so that again this recovery etc discovery of the uh, dscp server getting some uh, offer and go and so forth so there is one process or it can other process so see if we look at this whole whole flow diagram uh, it is uh, it is uh, interesting to see that the ip configuration is leased to this client so it can be uh, any any client right any servers like like as i was mentioning most of the uh, systems in iit kharagpur network are on dscp lease right so they request once i boot this request for the ip ip is allocated and and it goes on uh, ip and other configuration is you know, and those uh, lease period at after the period defined period goes on reactivity right so with this if we look at 
uh, again that thing. So, the DSTP server again at 6 port 67 with UDP passive open. So, that the DSTP discovery uh, as we have seen here the process come into play and it uh, offer reply with the DSTP offer. Uh, again if you look at it is offer then it is a DSCP request and this is a DSCP positive acknowledgement or acknowledgement to uh, accept that things and go in that uh, particular um, accepting the IP and um, other configuration and get gets by uh, bind with that particular thing. Now, uh, after 50 percent of the time elapsed time expires the DSCP uh, request if the server does not respond the request is repeated after uh, some time that is the uh, 87.5 percent time expire. Then it goes for a DSCP request if the server respond with a NAC that is not uh, acknowledgement negative acknowledgement then uh, the client must start all over again that go for the initialization and so and so forth the DSCP NAC. So, if the server responds with an acknowledgement the client has a new release that is the uh, new uh, lease of the thing and so and so forth. So, there are other options as we have seen here DSCP release and uh, uh, lease cancel stuff where uh, where it is uh, again goes to the uh, the machine the DSCP list is released or that of things. So, what we see in this uh, this protocols like from ARP, RARP, boot TP or DSCP uh, protocols what we see these are the protocols which allows this data link layer to have the uh, say uh, so to say at the connectivity level how things works like given IP how, uh, how a hardware address can be resolved and pushed given a hardware address I can get the IP configuration. So, it can be uh, connected to the network. So, there is more of a configuring the network aspects of the things which come into play and uh, so these are all important protocol and these are some of the what we say uh, so to say border level uh, protocol or transition things where which connects that uh, uh, that other part that IP networks and others with the data link layer and helps in forwarding the packets right. In some of the literature they kept it in the IP, uh, IP layer itself some of the things you will get in the border, but nevertheless it involves both IP and the MAC uh, things and rather more of a IP if we look at the RARPA boot TP and DSCP it requires IP level configurations and uh, the hardware address from things uh, I mean from which it can be requested and populated. So, uh, these uh, aspects are uh, as important as we have seen uh, error control and flow control in data link layer. So, with this let us conclude our uh, lecture today, we will continue our discussion with other aspects of layer 2 and also finally, we will look at some aspects of uh, layer 1 or the physical layer considerations. Thank you.